So this is the place. The skull in the jungle. I've been meaning to come here for some time. And I guess now that I'm a traveling trader of sorts, <laughs> we've finally arrived. And we've got a delivery of goods here. That is right, my friends. I have transformed. If you didn't see the last episode of Hermitcraft, we kind of became a wandering trader, thanks to the belt game. And as you can see, I have leveled up. I am now a green belt, and we'll cover more on that in a little bit. First of all, we're at a beautiful place, not in the jungle that I am located in on the Hermitcraft server. There are several jungles, and this is the home to many of the hermits, including our partner in brewery, Stress Monster, who has this amazing build behind me. The skull with the flowers. I love it. Taking something grim, making it a little bit purdy. I absolutely love this build and this place is sensational and I have been dragging my trader car across the Hermitcraft world to uh, park it over here. I don't know if this is where Stress is doing her brewery or not actually. We're going to have a little nosy around in a second. First of all, this is my cart that I've parked up over here full of potions and goodies inside of these chests and barrels and you know what? I really wish I had found a horse to tie up to the front of it. In fact, there's a bunch of animals over there. Let's see if they're horses. They're not. The cows, chicken. <gasps> there's a panda. Oh, what if it were the panda? It's in a minecart. How do you get a panda out of a minecart? Look at the size of its hitbox. You have to hit it down here. Woo! Okay. Now, I hope that pandas aren't allergic to water. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. You can't leash a panda? Why do I not know this? I missed a snapshot. Okay, okay. Crisis averted. Pretend like nothing ever happened. Well, it might not be a horse, but it pulled the cart over here, apparently. Let's leash you up. <laughs> that looks so silly. In substitute of a horse, we have an ocelot over here. Oh, anyway, I have read... I have read? I have left stress a book over here to read. Dear Stress, it took many moons to drag this cart here and my efforts have been in vain. My experiments to create fire potions did not succeed. But alas, partner, I have a plan to brew more. Expect to see me again soon. Be Suma, the traveling trader. That's why it beeps. <sighs> All of my experiments over there at the witch farm did not yield a lot of potions. I had this thing running around the clock for quite some time. And how many fire potions did I get? That? <laughs> Compared to, you know, all of these chests and all of these barrels filled to the brim. Some of them not filled to the brim. Yeah, it, it didn't really work out too well. Here in our first experiment, it's a little hard to see, but the witches, when they fall down, are holding fire resistance potions. This is because we have lava streams up above. There are four of them, and they're at a height where the witches will fall down and hit the lava without actually swimming and getting caught in it. The reason it's high up though is because we want them to still take full damage and this means I can kill them a little quicker but overall this method was pretty ineffective. The second thing that I tried had the most success. It was kind of a repeat of what we had done before with the dispenser and the lava except I put this on three of the sides and I'm pretty sure this was probably destroying some of the items but it did yield some fire resistance potions. Unfortunately the timing meant not a lot. And in my haste to set this up and do an overnight session of farming, I created a monstrosity of chests and hoppers down here. And, you know, they, they filled up. But as you can see, for every chest, you only get one or two fire potions, which isn't good enough. So it's somewhat of a failed attempt, but I did take the time to renovate the witch farm, so to speak. So down here, things look a little cleaner and the storage has been expanded. I've put in these guardrails to stop you from walking off the edge. And then up the top here, I've added an on-off switch for the lava mechanism here. And I've also gone and added a switch like we had down below to turn the farm on and off. So I simply just extended this upwards and over to this lamp. And the main reason I moved it up there was because of me. You know, I go to AFK farm and then I realized, oh, I, I haven't actually turned the farm on. And so I think that's the last we'll see of this place for some time. And unfortunately, ah. Oh, hasn't produced the potions we needed. So I promised Stress that she could have our instant health potions and fire resistance, and if we're not actually producing a lot of those second ones, then we need to find a way to do that. But first of all, while I'm over here, I wanted to have a little nosy around. This is actually the project area, I believe, where Stress is going to do her brewing, as inside of here, there is a giant list 
of all the things needed to brew all of the potions. And it's this right here that we need, magma cream. So I have a ways in mind as to how we're going to get our hands on some of that. But for now, I'm just flying around and appreciating the view. <laughs> Loving the rainbow over here and the flower as well. Gorgeous builds. Do like it ever so much. But I know what you're itching to know right now. How did I get this green coat, the green belt? Well, obviously I pressed the button. But there's a little bit more to it than just that. I teased this at the end of the last episode. I literally just came over to this thing and it was on green and no one else was around so I went ahead, pressed the button and got myself the belt. Now as I had mentioned previously, my plan and approach for playing this game was, you know, if other people are around and the button is on the same colour as I am, I'm going to try and press it because I don't want them getting the next colour up right. I think that's the point of the game. Who knows? Anyway, this next encounter was really crazy. So I had spotted Iskow and Doc working together to guard the button and of course I wanted to go and press it because it was the green rank and I didn't want those two getting green, although I'm not actually sure what rank they have. And so I regenerated my health, swooped back around and went in for another attempt. This time really unlucky not to hit the button but also very lucky not to have died. Both Iskow and Doc were swinging their swords at me. And then a little banter in chat. I was under the impression that maybe they'd installed another armor stand there. And then attempt number three. This one really was a complete failure. <laughs> Didn't even get close to the button. Ugh, yeah, not very good. Then things started to get really crazy. Other hermits were in the area. I believe Cubfan might have brought in some wolves as well, which started to attack Doc and Iskow. And then during all of this craziness, Hypnotized actually got killed by Iskow. So Hypno was in there going for it as well. And do you want to know what happened next? Well, I decided to use my noggin and I came up with a really effective strategy for getting in there and smacking that button. And then after, some chaos ensued. So I realized what I needed to do was get on the roof of this thing and hold down shift so I could see where Doc and Iskow were down below. And I believe they were both a little bit distracted. And this would allow me to actually drop straight down. And this is the first time I've actually used my sword on another player. I kind of wanted to avoid PvP in this game, but it seems like it's an inevitability. And I didn't even go and collect my belt because, hey, I'm already green rank. But then, yeah, things got a little bit hairy because Iskow decided to chase after me. And chase, he did. He was on my tail for quite some time. I decided that what I would do is go as high up into the world as I could because up there sometimes the player doesn't render and that might not have been so because he even managed to pepper off some shots that almost hit me. It was pretty intense. And then at one point it was just like, I don't know where I am. Th everything is void. There's nothing going on here. <laughs> and of course after a while I did manage to lose this scout and then almost hit into whatever structure this is. Yeah, could have uh, could have lost my life there. And on my way back down to the ground as I was getting my bearings, I always went right back to the button machine. So I decided to skidaddle out of there and get back to a safer location. So right now there's a giant upvote arrow and the belt is on purple. So I won't be pressing this until it's green or higher. And I'm going to be popping back in here to check on it from time to time, that's for sure. I do want to remind you all that this is a game, we're playing by the rules of the game and we're all friends here on the Hermitcraft server. If you know, if I were to have got killed like Hypno did, I would have been cool with it because I think that's just part of partaking in the game, right? Anyway, it's been really fun so far, but things are getting a little bit out of hand. Hey, look at this. Someone's changed their skin. Joe is also green rank. Look at us. Just two green belt fellas hanging out in the nether. Now let's think back a few steps for a moment. Earlier in this episode we were trying to make fire potions for stress monster. And what do we need to make those? We need magma cream made with blaze powder from blaze rods and slimes. And we are going to have no problems getting our hands on slime again. Every time I come and check up on this thing, it is full to the brim. It is absolutely amazing how efficient this thing is. And look at that. <laughs> The stock we have here is absolutely crazy. Oh, I'm loving it. I have gotten distracted again, haven't I? There is something else that we need blaze rods for. And if we cast our minds back to last episode where we built this weird and wonderful monstrosity, we got end rods. Problem is, I'm literally down to my last one. 
this is it right here. The only end rod that I have. So we have a real incentive here to create a blaze farm and get our hands on some more blaze rods. And we have easy access to a blaze spawner because of the hole in the bedrock me and Impulse put in. This of course leads to a nether fortress where I know there is a blaze spawner. I mean there's a couple of blazes over there. But we want to build ourselves a farm. And I actually see a blaze head and some glass. <laughs> that, that looks like someone else might have beaten me to it. It's actually Stress's farm. Hmm. I was just thinking, hey, you know, whoever built this farm, maybe it would be cool if I used it and then gave them some end rods. You know, because I plan on selling the end rods as well as using them myself. But it's Stress Monster's farm, so chances are she'll probably be cool with us using this. So this is really cool. Stress is fine with me using the farm. We'll be able to help each other out with getting potions and end rods together. And I was just looking at this thing and thinking, hey, it might need a minor modification so I can do the old cheaty AFK clicking. However, if we press F3 and B, the problem here is if I stand in one location, I'm either going to hit the ones on the left or the ones on the right. But if I move around like this, stand over here you can see we can aim through both sets of hitboxes so if I just stand here clicking over and over again I mean need to be a little bit further forward than that okay a fair bit further forward as you can see I can now hit all of them just by standing at this angle and constantly clicking so look at this loads of blazes are spawning they hang out on the glass eventually they pathfind down over here and then there I am <laughs> afk clicking right now farming all of the blaze rods and this design right here is super simple as you can see it's just a glass cage and then it uses the blazes own AI against them to trick them into pathfinding into the corner where they fall down and yeah I do the business now this farm was designed by Nembomb MC it's an absolute classic I can't remember if I actually built his design in the past or not but I've certainly built similar ones so this episode we're not building a blaze farm but if you want to check out his video there'll be a link in the description box down below and of course, if you just want to see it being built on Hermitcraft, you can always go and check out Stress's episode as well. After about 10 minutes or so, I'm <laughs> wondering what's going on here. We've got an absolute crowd of blazes. Ooh, particle effects. No particle effects. Particle effects. No particle effects. Particle effects. Goodness me. Yeah, this might not be doing too good for the server, and I'm not sure why they're all stuck like this. So I've been speaking with Nembom and he suggested that I might need to replace these trapdoors and set them up slightly different. And also there is this gap in the glass down here that the blazes could be pathfinding to. So with a couple of adjustments I hope to solve the problem of all the blazes building up. I've also now added a couple of blocks here to help them pathfind over to the corner. And it really does feel like the more of them are in this area, the less they pathfind over there. So there's one more thing that we can do, and that is actually extend the size of this big chunk of blocks over here. There are a couple of areas in which it could be expanded, made bigger, and that might help the blazes figure out their pathfinding into this space here. I believe we have done it by filling in this box over the side here. Now every blaze makes its way over to this corner really quickly. So there's three of them here, and yep, there they all go, straight over to the corner. So look at this, my friends. Blaze rods, blaze rods, blaze rods. And of course, not all of those are mine. I'm going to leave that lot in there. So off to a fantastic start. I haven't had the most time to AFK over here, but it is fixed. Now, there is one thing that I've noticed is that it can build up with blazes over time. And it seems like once it starts to build up, you end up with a load of them up there. And I found a really weird trick to force them into pathfinding. And that is to simply log out and log back in. We might see it in action right now, but someone else was in the never, so it despawned all of them. Oh. Anyway, that's a good trick to get them to pathfind and then stop them from building up. So we're going to head out of here now, but I actually managed to record a clip of what I was trying to describe a moment ago. So loads of blazes in the farm built up. I log out, log back in. And literally all of them just start pathfinding over again. So this could be a Minecraft bug. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Anyway, we can collect our blaze rods and get out of here. And my oh my, have we collected a lot of blaze rods and we got another blaze head. These things are super rare. So then, we have our slimes and our blaze rods to make magma cubes. Now we need a whole bunch of popped chorus fruit and I've been trying to expand our farm over here. This stuff is so slow to grow. I went through several phases of, you know, chopping them down, replanting the flowers. 
And in doing that, I kind of realised that the scaffolding is the tool of choice. It's super useful for getting up and down the size of the chorus flowers and then actually getting the flower blocks. But from all of that, we didn't actually get a lot. Look, you know, not even four stacks. It takes a lot of time and effort to get this stuff going. Also, look, we've got a cheaty floating scaffold up there. And I am going to try and attempt to land on it. And I did. First time. <laughs> Now, shouldn't the server kick me in a moment for moving around in the sky? No? <laughs> what if I try and attach a bit of scaffolding? Then that disappears and the other one stays? We should be able to make a game out of this. <laughs> yeah, look at me go! <laughs> oh, that's just silly. So, now we've got to smelt this all up and our furnace array over here actually has tons of fuel thanks to our witch farm, so the entire thing is backed up with sticks. And now that that's all smelted, we're in Stress Monsters area again. I love that skull. That's <laughs> such an awesome build. And over here in the brewery housing, I have dropped off some goodies. An entire barrel's worth of <laughs> magma cream. Here's what I'm thinking. Do you think all of that will get used by the time Hermitcraft Season 7 is over? I think not. I don't think fire resistance potions are in that much demand. And also, we got 16 stacks of end rods, so I've given half of those to stress for letting us use the blaze farm. Now, lots of things have been happening while I've been recording this episode, including more shenanigans with the button, okay? Let's jump into this. So I was in the nether, walking past the button, I had a gander, and it was on green, I think, when I first started to camp the button, as the expression goes. And Hypnotized was around here as well. We were talking back and forth a little bit. He was just hanging out in the area waiting for it to tick up to the yellow rank. And so there was a little bit of back and forth with Hypno. And after chatting to him, I found out he was actually already yellow. So I believe he would have had to have waited all the way until it was orange. Or he might have wanted to press the button at yellow. After a while, the activity from the other hermits calmed down and I just sat there patiently waiting. I'd seen this tick up once already and I had a feeling that we were getting really close to ticking up to yellow. You see, I was doing other things in the house. I was cleaning and cooking and I'd run upstairs to the computer to check on it every so often. And what would you know, when I was sitting down to eat, it must have been very close. I've been waiting for about 15 minutes. And then this guy comes out of nowhere and just wanders up to it and takes it straight away. So well done XP. Also XP wasn't green rank yet, so I guess that's good for him, getting the green belt, but oh, we were so close to getting yellow, I tell ya. And the fun doesn't end there, I tell ya. This next one, okay, it was a little bit of stupidity on my behalf, I'll say. I have just flown over here to the button to check on it, as you do from time to time, and it's red. <laughs> the top level, I've got a feeling this is too good to be true? Does that mean it died? Wait, did the button die? Uh, I think it's dead. <laughs> I think the button is dead, people. That's right, I've managed to do it once again. I've completely embarrassed myself. I'm a colossal derp, we already knew that. Here's what I was thinking in my head. It was early in the morning, and I thought that it would be ticking up in this direction. So when I saw all the lamps were full, yeah, I got a little bit too excited. But anyway, it seemed it all turned out in good spirits because Mumbo came on to fix the button and he thought it was absolutely hilarious once he realised that I was the one who got it all the wrong way around. And I think some of the other hermits enjoyed it as well. <laughs> I got so excited. I... You know what's up, the redstone lamps. They work the other way around. It's when only this one is on that you get the red belt. I... Oh, I am forever a colossal derp. How do I keep doing this? Over and over again. So, with all of that out of the way, we can finally get back to what we were working on last episode. And I've got some end rods, of course. Oh, and we've got a visitor, a wandering trader. That guy just spawned right then and there, right? What do you have to trade? Ooh, I might have some of these things in my ender chest. And look at me, I've gotten all of them, all of the trades, excellent. And yes, I didn't have my ender chest with me, I left it over at Stress's base. And do you know what else this means? We can make some diamonds over at Iskal's little mini block collection thing, and early comers, you can take these for two diamonds. Now, we can't submit the Observer because we actually did that one before, and I've submitted the Durite. I've got a feeling Iskal might burn that one. 
So we're back over here and we got chess monsters, which means I've been busy and the thing behind me is now pretty much finished. However, there's a modification I need to make down the bottom here. And a lot of comments from people pointing out that the bone blocks are a little bit bland and I need to experiment with iron block pillars coming out. But that first experiment was terrible. But anyway, what you're about to see behind me is pretty amazing. So you might not pick up on it straight away. But I actually went and changed the size of the white box around the back here and put in a really big one because I kind of felt like the shape of the overall thing was a little bit lonesome in the middle here. So now it's a little bit more square overall. And there are many things that I could do going back and starting again from scratch that I would change. But the overall project has been really fun to experiment with and it's been a learning lesson as well. So as I fly around here and give you various little views of the sides, you'll see that all the edges have been filled in and there is an absolute ton of detail on that thing. I think what I want to do in the next video is do like a replay mod flying around it and then you'll get a real good look at it. But as you might suspect with me mentioning the next video and all, this is it from me this one. I hope you've been entertained. It's been a really fun episode. And uh, yeah, leave a like to support the channel and the video and all that cool stuff and subscribe. You know, you know the deal. You know the deal. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.